Hi, my name is Bokhadar Ahmed. Welcome to the course of Single Variable Calculus. In this video lecture, we're going to solve a problem on surface area of evolution. Basically, we need to find the surface area which is obtained by rotating this curve around x-axis. And we are going to use this formula in order to find the surface area. And first thing which we are going to do is to sketch this curve in order to better understand what's going on and what kind of curve we are so what kind of object we are going to find so the graph which we are going to sketch is going to be e in the power of minus x for all the possible values of the x which are more than zero so if you look to this function this is the exponential function which is going to decay as x is going to increase right and it's going to cross the x-axis or y-axis sorry at the point one and then it's going to decay until infinity, actually, right? So what we have to do is we need to rotate this curve around the x-axis. And then we need to find its surface area. So if you rotate this, it's, so here at the minus one, we are going to have roughly this kind of figure, right? So at some point, it's going to hit with the x-axis at the infinity, but we need to continue this curve until the infinity. So what we need to do, first of all, in order to use this formula, we need to find the f prime of x, and then one plus f prime of x in the square, and put this everything into the formula. So if f of x is equal to the e in the power of minus x, then f prime of x is going to be equal to the e in the power of minus x, times the derivative of the x, which is minus one, or it's going to be simply minus e in the power of minus x. So if I would like to find a one plus f prime of x in the square, that's going to be equal to one plus e in the power of minus two x, right? So since my, this minus in the square is becoming plus in the square of the e in the power of minus x, it's going to be e in the power of minus two x. And and now we have to put everything into this formula. So the surface area, it's going to be equal to the integration. So actually we need to integrate from zero until infinity, or we need to make, so we can't really put here infinity here. So we need to find this was the limit, but hopefully you understand what I mean. So here f of x is going to be e to the power of minus x times to the square root of one plus um, e to the power of minus tx dx so the first thing which comes to my mind is to introduce the substitution rule and then try to integrate this so our substitution is going to be in this way so the u is going to be equal to let's say e in the power of minus x then the u is going to be equal to minus e in the power of minus x dx and we have e in the power of minus x dx here and we can substitute x actually everything was the u in our integration so we can write us here as integration of 2 pi right times so e in the power of x times dx is going to give you minus du right and i'm going to write here minus du and here we are going to have the square root of 1 plus u in the square Right? So since if the u is equal to the e in the power of minus x, then u in the square is going to be e in the power of minus 2x. Right? And this is a kind of set standard formula which we're going to use. Um, so before we do this, we need to also define the borders of the integration. Right? So since now we introduced a new variable here, we have to introduce the new borders of the integration as well. So if the x is equal to the zero, what's going to be the u, where the u is going to be equal to the e in the power of minus x, right? So it's going to be equal to the e in the power of zero or just simply one, right? So I'm going to substitute one to here. And if x is equal to infinity, actually, then u, which is e in the power of minus infinity, right? It's going to be equal to the zero because it's going to be one over infinity roughly it's going to be equal to the zero so we have to integrate this from one 
to the zero. And fortunately, so we have this minus here and we can just use this minus in order to flip the borders of this integration. And we, it's going to be integration from zero to the one. So we can take, take out the t pi as well from here. So t pi times one plus u in the square du. So this is very similar to the integration of a square root of one plus x in a square. And we can integrate this using the trigonometric substitution or uh, so basically using the substitution of the tangent. And we are going to have this kind of formula. So the integration of the one plus u in a square, it's going to be equal to this huge formula. So if you would like to understand how, it's, how we derived this formula, just go to our videos where we derived this formula before. So the t pi integration from zero to the one of the one plus u in a square du, it's going to be equal to uh, t pi. So I'm going to multiply the t pi to all the terms here. It's going to be pi times u square root of one plus u in a square plus pi times ln of square root of one plus u in a square plus the u. And since it's a, it is definite integral, we have to substitute the zero and one. If you substitute the one, it's going to be pi times square root of t plus pi times ln of square root of t plus one, right? And if I substitute the zero, it's going to be actually zero. So let me check. So pi times zero, right? Times square root of one plus zero in a square plus, oh, sorry, minus again. So pi times ln of square root of one plus zero plus zero, which is again a zero. So this term is equal to the zero and this term is equal to the zero. So overall surface so area is equal to only to this term and we can use the calculator in order to calculate this and it's exact value in decimal form, it's going to be 7.21. So this is the surface area of this solid.